Hi, uh, welcome back. So now that we have learned a bit about language modeling as well as the GPT model and the objective function used and so on, uh, let's see uh, what we are going to do on the hands-on uh, part corresponding to this uh, lecture, right? So we'll just quickly set the context and then move on to the uh, collab notebooks. So as we said, we have done the data set, we have done the tokenizer. Now we are going to focus on the uh, transformers library. And we want to initialize a model and train the model, right? Uh, that's the goal here. And then we had also seen this earlier, right? That we can create any architecture with a few lines of code in PyTorch. So you could create like the, the GPT model that we uh, saw, right? At least a scaled down version of uh, it uh, with uh, very few lines of code. Not even a scaled down, I mean actually the full GPT model. You could actually write it in PyTorch with uh, very few lines of uh, code, right? But... Uh, when you want to train the model, right, this is what happens in the background. So you first have to consume the data. So you'll sort of uh, consume it as a tensor. Then you'll have the parameters of the model and then you'll have to sort of do some auto grad uh, or sort of the automatic uh, gradient computation on the parameters. Uh, then you have the uh, model itself, right, which will have a linear layer, transformer layers and so on. And then you have the optimization algorithm which decides what is your weight update rule, right? Is it theta minus the gradient or is it any of the opti uh, Adam style of or momentum style update rules that is what the optimizer decides right now once you consume the data batch and you have the parameters you sort of start training uh, sort of pass do what is known as the forward pass right and then once you have done the forward pass that sort of decides your loss function and then the gradients sort of have to be computed and the parameters have to be updated. So the parameters of the model also get updated. Right? And you will do this in steps. So you'll have one step running at a time and this entire loop would be going on where you're consuming the data, uh, doing the forward pass, computing the loss, calculating the gradients, updating the parameters, move on to the next step and so on, right? Uh, so this, um, the transformers module can actually be used to implement the sequence of operations. And then sort of we fetch the data and every data batch we get, we can then pass it through this loop where for every batch you are computing the forward pass, the gradients and all of that and sort of keep doing this in a loop. But how do we fetch the data, right? We can slice the data into batches and then iterate. It's not a big deal, but we need to be careful about something, right? So uh, we may want to randomly shuffle the samples. Right? So this is the original data given to you and any kind of training always starts with some sort of shuffling, right? And this shuffling uh, sometimes happens at every epoch also, right? So now the date model data is being read and the model is under training and there's this uh, global uh, interpreter lock, right? Uh, which does not allow you to fetch the next uh, sort of batch when the model is being trained on the current batch, right? So that could lead to some uh, challenges where the model is waiting for the next set of samples to uh, be fetched, right? Uh, and then further, if you want to distribute this data on multiple GPUs, then there's some complexity involved. And if it is multiple nodes, that means one node has the eight GPUs and then there are many such nodes, then the distributing, uh, it, it adds some more complex, uh, complexity to the uh, setup of distributed training, right? Now, what we need is an eff efficient mechanism of uh, doing this. Right? And as usual, of course, the hugging face uh, ecosystem will come to our rescue where all of this is sort of abstracted and we could use the built-in uh, uh, sort of uh, features in hugging face, which can sort of allow us to abstract all this complexity of fetching the data, uh, sending it to different nodes, different GPUs and all of that. And we are going to look at some of these uh, features in this uh, section in this uh, uh, in the notebook corresponding to this uh, section, right? So we'll start with the data set token as a data loader, and then we'll focus on the initializing the model and the training the model, and we'll be looking at a few libraries uh, in this context, right? So that's all. Uh, that's what we have in store uh, for the hands-on section of uh, this lecture. So I'll end this here, and we can directly jump into the uh, collab notebook now. Thank you. Thank you.